Hey guys, it's Sarah here. In this video, we're going to be going over the respiratory assessment for nursing students and nurses. It's going to include the respiratory pattern, abnormal and normal breath sounds, and more. If you'd like to get this video in a PDF form, please look at my links below. So let's get started. The respiratory assessment consists of subjective data and objective data. Subjective data is what the patient tells you. I'm short of breath. I feel this, etc. Objective data is what you observe from the patient. Objective data involves four main steps. Inspection, palpations, percussions, and oscillation. Inspection is when you use your vision to observe the patient's behavior, appearance, and movement. So you're just looking at them and looking how they appear. Are they diaphoretic, etc. Palpation is when you use your hands and fingers to touch their body to feel. You're gonna feel the size of the organs, the tenderness, the shape. Percussion is when you use your hands and you tap against their body surface to produce a sound. Auscultation is when you listen with a stethoscope to breath sounds. So the first one, like we said, was inspection. What you're gonna be looking over here is at the patient's color. Are they pale? Are they yellow? You're also gonna be looking at their appearance. Are they sweating? Are they trying to catch their breath? You're gonna be looking at the chest wall movement. Is it rising and falling like it should? Is it equal, symmetrical? You're also gonna be looking if they're using their accessory muscles, which is abnormal. Another sign of the respiratory is the nails, clubbing of the nails. That means that they have long-term oxygen depletion. And last but not least, you're gonna be checking the respiratory pattern. Here are the following respiratory patterns that you should know. Euphnia is normal respiratory pattern, which is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. It's how one should be breathing. Apnea is absence of breath sounds. Bradypnea is the same thing as normal, so you're gonna see chest rise and fall, but it's just slower, so it's, not, it's gonna be below 12 breaths per minute. This could be found like when someone's sleeping, when someone overdoses, like that. Tachypnea is also normal, so the chest rise and falls, regular breath, but it's much faster, so it's more than 20 breaths per minute. And this could be from a fever, from compensating mechanism. Then we go on to cosmal respirations. So this is rapid, deep, and labor. They're usually found in DKA patients, metabolic acidosis, or even renal failure. And the last one is chain stokes. So this is a rapid and deep, and then you have a period of apnea. Chain stokes is usually found with head injuries, strokes, overdoses. Palpation. A normal palpation should not cause pain. If it does, you should assess what's happening in that area and why they have pain. You want to palpate for tenderness, bulging, and stuff like that. You want to assess for crepitus, which is, you're going to hear, which is abnormal, and it signifies subcutaneous ear in the chest. This is going to sound like a grating, cracking sound. You also want to do tactile fremitus. It's when you place both your palms on a patient's back and you ask the patient to say 99. They're going to say 99, 99. You're going to note the areas of asymmetry or if they're decrease or increase in one area. As you see in the left picture, that's the correct pl placement of your hand. Another thing you want to do is you want to evaluate for chest expansion. So as you see in the right picture on the bottom, you're going to put your thumbs at the 10th rib. You're going to tell the patient to inhale and your, your thumb should move apart symmetrically. The same thing, exhale, and they both should move symmetrically. 
they shouldn't have pain in the area. You want to check if one is not moving symmetrically. It could indicate atelectasis, pneumothorax, or a pneumothorax. So next we go on to percussion. So percussion is when you're going to place your non-dominant hand, hyperextend that middle finger, and then take your dominant middle finger, and you're going to tap it on your non-dominant middle finger. As you see in the picture below, that's exactly what the provider is doing. Taking the dominant mi middle finger and tapping it on the non-dominant middle finger, which is on the patient. It's going to be a quick and sharp one. So it's going to be a quick and sharp tap. And you want to go from side to side comparing. You're looking for sound variations. Normal sound is resonance, which is going to sound hollow and it's going to be heard over normal lung tissue. Flat is going to sound like soft and high pitch, and it's going to be heard over consolidation, so like atelectasis. Dull sound is going to be like medium, so medium pitch, medium everything, and it's heard over a solid area, so it can mean pleural effusion. Hyperresonance is loud below pitched and it's heard over hyperinflated lungs like emphysema and the last sound you could hear is tympanic which is a musical drum like sound and it's telling you that there's ear collection so there could be like an ear bubble next we go on to auscultation Auscultation is when you're listening to the breath sounds using a stethoscope. You want to listen for inspiration and expiration. You want the patient to be sitting up upright and tell them to breathe deeply through their mouth. Normal breath sounds. There are four types. Number one is tracheal. Tracheal sounds harsh and discontinuous. It's heard midline over the trachea. The next type of normal breath sound is bronchial. It's heard over the trachea like the large airway part. It's loud, high pitched, and it's especially heard during exhale, exhalation. Then goes bronchovesicular, which is medium and continuous sound. It's heard over the scapula on each side of the sternum. And the last one is vesicular, which is what you're gonna hear over the rest of your lungs, which is soft and low pitch. As you see in the diagram below, it's showing you where you could hear all of them. So now that we discussed the normal breath sounds, we're gonna go on to the abnormal breath sounds. The first one we're gonna discuss is crackles. Crackles is the same thing as rails. These are discontinuous crackling, as the name sounds, clicking like crackling clicking sound. It's heard during inspiration. They could be fine or coarse crackles. This indicates the alveoli is collapsed or filled with fluid. The next abnormal breath sound is strider. So strider is high pitch sound that's heard during inspiration. It indicates an upper airway obstruction. The next one is wheezing. So wheezing is also high pitched, but it's like a whistling musical sound. It's heard during inspiration and it indicates a lower airway obstruction. The next one is pleural friction rub. This is hard, grating, cracking sound that is caused when two layers of pleura rub against each other. So they could be inflamed, which causes them to rub against each other. Okay, so here's just a diagram that shows you where you should auscultate, so where you should place your stethoscope to listen to breath sounds. And as always, remember, you're going from one side to another to compare both sides. So thank you for watching. If you wanna get this whole video in a printable form, please check out the link below. Please subscribe, like this video, and stay tuned for more. Good luck.